This week on the map, Uni take top spot after a tight win against the ships. Dodgers Ferry Ruckman Jack Siggins joins us here in the studio to talk about the Sharks and their September aspirations. We've got Holy Trousers coming up. On top of that, we've got The Bev Whoa. from The Bev Show coming in to talk about God only knows what. And of course, we look at your social media pictures. We've got Furphy Play of the Day, all that and more coming up next on the map. Welcome to the map. Tubes Taylor here with you once more. And of course, Peach, how are you, mate? Terrific, Tubes. We are joined this week by Dodgers Ferry Ruck superstar, Jack Siggins. Thanks for coming in, Jack. Thanks for having me. Peachy, you're going to go through the SFL results. Yeah, firstly, in the game down at Dodgers Ferry, was a, a really tough grinding win for Dodgers Ferry over Signet by a couple of goals. Hewenville and Claremont played out a blinder down there in Hewenville. I picked Hewenville. And with no Mickey Paul, unfortunately, Hewenville lost by three points in a really tough game for them. Sorrell, Lindisfarne, super title day. In the end, Lindisfarne got the win. And Hobart and your Norfolk, it was Hobart comfortably at the TCA ground. Yeah, a couple of great games here for the SFL. Uh, Jack, how did you see your game down there at Shark Park? Um, yeah, well, it was really good to get the win up over Signet. Obviously, uh, we haven't beaten them since round one last year, and they knocked us out of the finals last year. So to get one back on them was really good. And it keeps you in touch with the top it, five. It does. It, um, if we had a loss on the weekend, that would probably looking like being our season. So winning on the weekend it, um, sort of keep, keeps our, you know, keeps our year alive and hopefully we, you know, keep winning and make it through the finals. There's nothing like a You've bit You've got expectations, though, to, to sort of make the finals because you're a game out, but you're, you've actually got a good percentage, though, or pretty good percentage. Wouldn't play if I didn't believe we could... We could do it. There you go, Peach. Yeah. You serve. We've got some highlights here. These these two blokes, Ferg and Wayne on the gate, they've got the fire going down there. Jack, what do you tell us about those two blokes? Yeah, well, they, they oh, Ferg's been around the club ever since. Oh, there's smokes in his eyes, eyes there, isn't it? <laughs> Ferg's around the club, been around the club forever. Um, and Wayne, Wayne used to run the bar down there. I think he, I'm, I'm not sure what he has to do with the club these days, but he, um, yeah, man's the gate and. Obviously, you uh, see the fire there. It was pretty cold down there on the weekend. So, Peachy, you went along and watched? Yeah, no, not a bad game of footy. I've seen Dodgers very few times this year. This is uh, Reardon, Elijah Reardon, getting uh, a nice goal to kick off for Signet. Um, early on, Jack, you were kind of up against um, a couple of Ruckman, you know, some reasonably good service Ruckman. How did you sort of cope with those two guys coming in and out, um, rucking against you? Yeah, well, <laughs> as you say, that they had two Ruckman, but we have a six foot eight back up Ruckman ourselves so we're, you know I, I normally blow up after about five minutes and uh, rest of the bench and he comes in so is that boy, where you do rest you didn't spend you spend a bit of time on the bench but my, my first rotation I'll always go to the bench yep. regardless on how I'm feeling I, even if I'm still feeling good I I go off in about six minutes you call that to, yourself do you? you just run off the ground I, I tell them to come out and get me at six minutes <laughs> yep. pure, purely because you don't want to blow up too early yep um, and having not played a lot of football lately, it's, uh, yeah, I, I really do need that rest to keep me going for the full game. You had a couple of contributors all day to, uh, down there. Wilson was very good. Yeah, Jack's uh, this year, is, um, his efforts this year have been unreal. It's, I, as I said, this is only my second year back at Dodgers Ferry, but he, he's just improved out of sight and he's really committed this year and uh, you know it shows in his football that was brad jackson giving away a free kick for hitting someone in the head with a foot <laughs> yeah that was a uh, that was a free kick to us that got reversed because of that hit to the head um you know whether whether it was warranted or not who knows it was already a contest in miller ground i thought you kept um andrew palmer and some of their better users and also neil reasonably quiet um what were sort of the winners for dodgers for who have been the winners sort of through that middle in the last sort of three or four weeks yeah, well, we're, we're sort of a in and under sort of team. So we, we've had fairly good use out of the midfield over the last two weeks, but it's getting to the point where um, we're actually having to try and stop the opposition from sharking our taps and whatever. Yep. So we're trying to try and different things. You're getting too and predictable. We are getting yeah. we are getting very predictable. So we've actually had to try and keep the tapping in closer and keep the yeah. ball in tight to you know bring it back to our style of football, which is contested football. Every time it went down forward for Signet, Benny Holton looked really dangerous, and and you've played a bit with him, with him and against him. Yeah, well, um, as I've said, Ben is I think he was when he was at Lauderdale, he was the best uh, forward in the state. He um, you know he, he could come up against three defenders, and if he doesn't mark it, he still gets it to the ground. So. You know, no matter no matter where he's playing, he's going to be a dangerous person. But I think Jake uh, 
has done really well on him. Yep, um, Jake Murphy. Did, did really yep. well on the weekend. So, yeah, credit to him. Brent Dolliver must be really happy as well with how you're travelling, considering you've just matched it with a side who will probably play finals. Yeah, that's exactly right. And as I said, it's a team that knocked us out of the finals last year. So, um, you know, be- beating those guys is a step forward. We've got New Norfolk who are looking like they're improving again. So we've got those guys next game, which will be another stepping stone. So, Just just on that, New Norfolk um, on a slightly better ground, is it a bit of a struggle playing at Dodgers Ferry or Sandpit, hard, hard pick park at the moment? Uh, as in the size of the ground or as in the maybe, conditions Maybe the it's conditions in? and surface. We've chatted a little <laughs> um, bit about um, maybe a little bit of sand on the ground. Is it, is it impeding your efforts? Uh, it's probably um, contributing to the amount of injuries I'm having. Um, it's not ideal to play on, but we, we play with what we've given. So. Well, there we go. Now, Pete, you're going to run through the results yeah, in depth. Yeah, absolutely. So kicking off Huonville, Claremont, as we mentioned, I, I kind of picked Huonville, but it came down to the crux in the end. Really close game. Three-quarter time. They had a pretty comfortable lead, did um, the, the Lions, and in the end, Claremont, just their experience and their quality, and they kind of, uh, yeah, snuck back up in the end, but 7.21. 21 points, that's uh, Yeah, I mean, it was points. windy conditions throughout. Yeah. Taz, I don't think there was a ground not, in, not impacted by wind on the weekend. Um, one of the games that was significantly impacted by wind was Hobart New Norfolk. Hobart belted out of the block, kicked 11 in the first quarter, Whoa. and has had it was Hadfield and Sullivan and those guys who kicked a, a ton of goals, and they had a pretty convincing win over in Norfolk and the great thing about Hobart they're obviously battling with you aren't they Jack for that sort of crucial sort of fifth fourth position and a bit of a boost for their percentage which is critical for them the game that intrigued me the most was Sorrell Lindisfarne at home we did get a little bit of footage on Duff TV which was as Duff roamed around the southern Tasmania in the bomber bill and it was I thought Sorrell might have pipped this game in the end but in the end Lindisfarne close all day Robertson Cassidy just classy Good footballers. I really like Sorrell. I think they've got some very good young talent coming up through the ranks, and Jock McGregor's doing a great job with them. So it'll be interesting to see how they go in the next few years. Well, I think they're improving every week, and um, they're a side where they can just keep their core group together. They'll be they'll be formidable later on. And of, of course, Dodger Ferry, um, a signet game we, we touched on earlier. On to the ladder now, Peach. What are you making of the top five? Yeah, well, it's a, it's kind of two teams that just jumped in front at the moment. They've got a bit of a, a, a lead late in the season, Lindisfarne Claremont. Both got similar percentage. Uh, Lindisfarne with a slightly better um, percentage at the moment than Claremont, so it's going to be pretty tough. Humanville, Signet, and then Hobart. But it's the Dodgers for any Norfolk, the two teams sniffing just outside the top five, which are going to be pushing late in the season. So for you guys, Jack, what is it? What's the plan? Just keep winning? Well, that's exactly right. We've just got to take care of what we can, take care of the other teams. They'll sort themselves out, and we've just got to keep winning on our end to... It probably is going to come down to percentage, maybe a, a, you know. Well, if you look at the ladder, and our percentage is actually better than the two yep. teams above us. So, um, and much better than New Norfolk. New Norfolk's been belted a few times. Yeah. And that's really going to come back to haunt them, I, I think. I think, as I said, our next game's New Norfolk, and I think Signet have the bye and Hobart Signet do have the bye, yep. Hobart up against Claremont. So you're a real right? chance to give it a mix when you get that, there. That's if, right. if you make it, do you think you can go deep into September? Oh, if, I think any team that makes it into the finals can go deep. It's, the competition's that close that yeah, anyone on their day could win it. It certainly is very tight at the top here in the SFL. Now, Jack, we do have a little gift for you, mate, of course, for coming in. The six-pack of Furphy, that's all yours. Perfect. Jack Siggins, thanks very much for joining us here on the map. We're going to cross now to a quick little break. It'll be, after this, the Old Scholars. Good day, Map fans. Bev here, and am I excited or what? Now, every week, I'm going to be giving my tips for the SFL, SFLW, and Old Scholars. I can't wait. I'm beside myself. Woohoo! You beauty. Go the map, and don't forget to check out my Facebook live stream every Sunday at 8 p.m. on the Bev Show Facebook page. Cheers. Right, Tube Taylor here for the map doing the Old Scholars wrap-up. I'm joined by the coach of the University Rainbows who had a three-point win over the ships today. Ben Beams, thanks for joining us, Beamer. Not a problem, Tubes. My pleasure. Very tight win today, mate, in trying conditions. Yeah, it was trying conditions. Um, the old uni ground, the middle of winter, we know what it's like. Um, 
hopefully the uni will help us out in the next year and uh, yeah, kick the cricketers off and uh, redo the ground for us. Every time you come on, you're reaching out for some money to the university, Beamer. Not sure about that. Now, uh, Trent Punchy Stevens kicked three goals today. Who were your other performers? Oh, it, was, it was really a team effort, but I, I thought um, Jackson Grubb did a wonderful job on uh, on their coach, Bung Langford. Um, Bung got away from us in the first quarter and we had to make a change and we put Grubby on him and he did a wonderful, wonderful job. Just going through the other results while you're here, Beamer, Richmond had a massive win over Hutchins by about 70-odd points and Dosa have defeated St Virgil's by 85. So it puts all the teams in the top four on 28 points, which is pretty unique across the uh, league. Yeah, it, it just goes to show how even things are. And um, I know I'm, I'm a big advocate for the old scholars. Uh, I think SFL's footy's dropped off and I think a few of them have actually realised that too, Tube. So right, well, there I'm, you go. Political from yeah, Ben Beans. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I've been pushing for a game against them for a long time, but I... I it just goes to show how even it is, and this win today is probably worth eight points to us. Absolutely, um, because if they had have won today, the ships, they would have been two games clear of you guys on top of the ladder. Correct, and and now Hutchins is uh, two games behind us. They've had the wood on us um, of late, so it's good good to see, you know, it puts a gap in them, and, and the top four's probably taken shape now. So from now, mate, what happens for your club? I know that percentage will come into it at the end of the year as far as big wins over the lower teams. You've had a few tight wins. Uh, tight losses though, so your percentage is pretty good? Yeah, percentage is pretty good. We've had four losses by a combined margin of 35 points. Um, I've said that a few times to the boys, so which is good in a way that we've, no one's blown us out of the water. We know our best footy is, is really competitive and, and, and we're not scared of any side. Um, the, the thing I'm scared of is just us and our own uh, inability to uh, to get things right and just do the simple things well for four quarters. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. They do say that footy is played 90% above the shoulders, mate, so hopefully you can get the boys right. I know you've got the ball tonight out there at uh, Blunston Arena, so enjoy it. As, as the song goes, you'll be out on the old town tonight? Uh, every chance. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining us here, Ben Beams, and uh, best of luck with the rest of the season. Thanks, Jubes. Joined now by the big ruckman from the ships, Cal Garvey, and you're also the captain, mate. A bit of a tough yeah. loss today. It was. It was... Uh... Very disappointing. I think we had a lot of possession, a lot of wasted possession that um, oh, it's hard to say. Like There was a lot of missed opportunities. It was really, really tight out there and the conditions obviously on the ground really brings it back to even well, footy. It. It, it's always a tough game when it's a loop. It wasn't so much the rain, but just the mud and uh, it was very, you know, like I said, it's very tough. Now, did you have a few blokes out injured today? Yeah, I think we've got about five or six out at the moment from our senior side from the start of the year. So. It was good for a few of the boys to step up, a few of the twos boys put their hand up and I think they played pretty well. Now your form mate, you're probably the inform Ruckman up there with Reese Watts from Dosa and uh, yeah. Marcus Gardner who played for the Rainbows today. Mate, you're having a great year. Yeah, it's, I've only played against Gardner once this year and um, yeah, he's a big boy. Same as, same as Reese as well, but there's a couple of handy ruckmen in this competition. Yeah, absolutely. Probably last year I played a bit of centre half forward and it was out of, out, of me, out of my position, so it's good to get back and have, have a crack at the run. And a couple of other players today that you thought shone out? Side si Dudge. Yeah, Side si Dudge and, oh, mate, he, uh, wherever the ball was, he was, and I can't remember how, uh, at least 30-odd touches, I reckon. Yeah, 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 yeah no, he was very good. And a uh, young Steph Hunter. Yep. He, he, he's, only, he's only a young fella and he comes on, he, he's a battle-hardened young kid. And, yeah. Now, the top of the ladder, it's getting pretty tight. The top four are all on 28 points oh, now it. after that win to university, so yep. it's going to be really tight come well, finals time. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to, hard to pick. Like I said, we've, we've won a few games against a few clubs, and we've lost against a couple of teams, and it's going to be a very tight race. It's going to be, um, yeah, it's hard to pick who's going to be... Yeah, there at the end of the at year. At the end of the year. Well, I think the top four are pretty much set because Hutchins did uh, lose to Richmond by about 75 points oh, over there yeah. oh. today, uh, down there at um, yep. Richmond today. So very tight. Uh, Cal Garvey, thanks so much yeah, for joining no, us on the map, mate, and awesome. all the best for the rest of the no, season. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good on you. Now we got Brody Langford, the coach of the ships, mate. A tough loss today. Yeah, very tough one, mate. Um, you know, we were all over them early on. The union are a good footy side. We've got um, we had, to, we had our chances, but again... I think we kicked four goals, ten. That's, I think, the seventh or eighth game in a row. We kicked double figures behind, so we've got ourselves to blame, but that's footy, mate. So that's maybe a bit of uh, goal kicking practice this week at training? I've been doing a little bit over the last couple of months, mate, but um, no, that's footy, mate. It was, a, it was a shocking day, but all credit to uni. Beamer's got them going well, so 
the weather wasn't too bad, but I spoke to Garvey before about the about the, the conditions of the actual field. It was pretty rough out there. Just it's just sloppy, mate. It's just heavy, you know. It had a bit of rain during the week, and it doesn't hold it the greatest. But I uh, like. That's footy, that's Tassie footy, you know, and it's suburban grounds, mate. You had an opportunity to go a game clear, essentially, on top of the ladder today. Does that re does that change your structure for the next few games coming forward? Uh, yeah, like, like I said, yeah, mate, um, we were a game clear on top, and now we've dropped all of a sudden to fourth, you know, so all, all four teams in the four are on 28 points, and we've dropped from first to fourth, so it's tough at the top. Um, we roll in the bye next week into Hutchins the week after. That's a huge game for us, um, you know. But that's the old school's footy comp. Um, anyone can beat anyone, so let's hope over the next month or two we have a few wins and the, get going. The bye comes at a good time for you guys as far as injuries go? Yeah, mate. We um, Our footy club's done really well over the last couple of weeks. We've probably got seven or eight blokes out of our best 22 sitting on the sidelines. One suspension, but we won't talk about that. Um, yeah, but that, that, that's footy again, mate. You know, like you have your ups and downs. You know, Wingnut and Benny Allenby will be back for sure next week. Damien Paul. You know, I'll probably have four or five changes to make next week but yeah it'll be good. Brady I know it's hard to chat to people after a loss mate but it's maybe the loss you needed to have going into finals perhaps but thanks so much for joining us here on the map we do appreciate your time. Cheers mate. Back to you in the studio Peach. And how about that? You had a nice day out there at uh, university. It looked average, the ground. Yeah, it was very average. I know that they've got a bit of money there to do it up in the next few years, so hopefully no more boggy uni oval. But the ladder peach is getting really, really tight. I'm not even top. interested in looking at it. It's too crazy for me. It's too many 28s at the moment. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot it's, of it's a very busy ladder. It looks like a very complex. It looks like my shirt from last week. It's hard <laughs> to know where to look. I think that uh, Hutchins are done. I think. Yeah, they're, they're technically done. three games out. Percentage in two games. They they're are. a long way behind. They've got some major injuries too. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that um, Hayes done his ACL, yep. who we know that the fullback he's done for the year. Williamson may be touch and go, and okay. Murphy Cohen perhaps Murphy may Cohen, have something yep. on the horizons as well. So it'll be very tight at the end of September. But those top four teams, University, IHA, DOSA and Richmond. Who should pick at this stage? I've got my thoughts. <laughs> I think I think that OHA are probably the form team of the competition, but anyone can win it. Anyone on their day will win it in the old scholars, and it'll be very interesting come September. Each final is going to be critical. Even the elimination finals are going to be as important as ones which have a double chance. 100%. And that's, and that's what I'm saying, that top two, it's really important for either all of those sides to get to that top two. So it'll be very dependent yep. on the ra round results leading into September. Yeah, now, totally. SFLW, mate, we've got another great week of women's footy. Yeah, it's been fantastic and, you know, the momentum's building. And I know that New Norfolk and a few other sides kind of kept getting walloped. I read a little blurb from the South East Suns website. Um, I think it was yesterday it was put up and it was, they were really um, positive in the way they spoke about their trip up and playing New Norfolk and the way they promoted the game. You know, I was stoked with what they sort of said. You know, so well done to the other teams that are actually flogging sides. They're also very gullant. And, no, they're, and, a, know, they're a great side out there at the South East Suns. Make no mistake. So the ladder were getting pretty tight at the top as well for the South East Sun and the Suns and the Lindisfarne Blues. It's going to be those two sides that will be pushing for Yeah, finals. it seems like it might be a replay. What, have, um, what about Possibly. the Lauderdale? I think Lauderdale may push. They, I think just those two form sides of the competition are There's are, some good leaders at Lindisfarne, isn't there? There some, are, but yeah. down around the bottom of the, of the top five, I guess, around that four, five, six position, could really be anyone. University are up and about. They, they believe they've got some games to win yeah. as well. So it could be anyone. Now... SF, STJFL, we're going on to that. We've got some highlights from some games out at Pompville, Richmond Oval and Kempton and, of course, the rep game yeah, that we University. went up and covered yeah. up at Utah Stadium in the north. Let's take a look. Nice uh, running into attack there. Excellent work by uh, Savage. Further afield, back out towards Cow. And now the two, uh, it's the Blues. Well played by Richmond. Comes out towards Charlie Ford. Oh, that's one bounce, two bounce, three bounce. Looking ahead. Oh, I think he's going to do Phil Manassas now. Gets the drop punt. Oh, and that has got to be the goal of the year. It's the Hawks who drive that one forward. It's uh, deep into their tack with not a lot of time left. Duff, uh, have to go closely. Oh, there's your tackle of the day. Zeman. That was Zeman with a brilliant piece of work over to uh, Robson and has kicked that one from nothing, Duff. Back to the footy here is Whitney. Tries to win it. Whitney just moves the ball third on. 
Here come the Joeys once again. Oh, that's a nice left boot. Left foot. Kick the pass. It's gone past the hands of Gregory. Gregory. Now it's go. gone to Greg. Tex. Oh. Tex kick a goal. Yes, Tex. Wonderful goal. And the excitement. Well, his mate's more excited. Finds that man, Bankel. Goes up towards Coburn, who slipped oh. and took a screamer oh. on the... If you don't mind, oh, go. that was a magnificent goal. That's got to be your duff player of the day, doesn't oh, it, Oh, it certainly does. Have a look at this. He slipped over Coburn and then just went, no, nah, I've got it. Slips catch, if you don't mind. How did you see it, Dan? You were right there. Oh, mate, I was right in front of that and I did a little dance. He's just taken another, another one, one as well. Brilliant little package there from the STJFL, Peach. Isn't it great to see the little ones running around playing a great game? They're sometimes more enthusiastic than the adults, aren't they? They certainly let's, are. Let's and hope they stay playing footy because they do drop off. How about that mark from Kylan Coburn? How about this? Just a slips I, catch. I've watched this a few times now, so he's on his back. He literally wasn't looking to the last minute and it just cannons into his chest. No, it was an absolute ripper. So and then good delivery here as well. Yeah, no, he's a superstar. Make no mistake, he's a jet. So that's uh, the highlight of the week for mine, I think, Peach. But we've got something coming up next. Oh, come on. Don't be like that, you know. I know you're a bit disappointed. That's the only time I get to be on the camera by myself. <laughs> And we've actually got to kick you out of the room to allow me to do it. We've got some holy yeah. trousers. And we're going to be chatting a little bit about Martin Duffy's most disliked slash favourite subject, congestion in football. And how do we get rid of it? That's coming up on Holy Trousers. Holy trousers, holes in your trousers. Imagine if Jack Dyer and Dermot Brereton jumped into the DeLorean at the peak of their careers and rocked up to 2018. What would they think of today's football? Congestion and low scoring are becoming part of the game and it's now spread to community football. Scoring in the AFL is at its lowest since 1968 and it takes many more entries inside 50 to score a goal. Players have less time to make decisions, therefore efficiency is greatly reduced, resulting in balls constantly being turned over. How do we change this? Coaches will continue to instruct players to choose low risk short kicks in order to maintain possessions, so we can't affect that. What we need is players provided more time to make better decisions. Ironically, what we need is to slow the game down. Rolling malls allow more players to get to the contest. Umpires need to blow the whistle as soon as the ball stops, and four players, two from each side, need to be nominated as the players in the ruck contest, and no other player can be within 15 metres. If players infringe, the non-officiating umpire can pull out a free kick, and creating more spaces at stoppages will create more efficiency and potentially more scoring. And yes, that's what we want. Certainly Martin Duffy does, and that's Holy Trousers. So there we go. Holy Trousers and congestion. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of changes coming up, Peach, yeah. which will make a lot of people happy well, Maybe not a lot. It doesn't have to be a lot of changes, I suppose. It just has to be a, a, a few changes to give people a little bit more of a chance to get rid of the ball. It will certainly make our producer, Martin Duffy, very happy, I'm sure. <laughs> there yeah, we go. There now, is. we've got some social media picks coming up here. A man who played his 200th yeah, game Josh up Josh Clifford, he's a feisty little character. He's a good footballer too. Goes for kicks, goals. Doesn't mind the rough and tumble, Josh Clifford. Of course, these boys down there, Ferg and Wayne, good on you lads, just throwing a few extra programs on the on the. <laughs> Is that how they keep, keep warm, it, do they? They don't sell warm, them. Yeah, the big freeze, he's got the MND hat on, well done. Now, there's a fella down there, Phil Hammer, who's yeah. been down at Dodgers Ferry running the scoreboard for quite some time, so a big shout out to Phil. Yeah, we need those sort of people. And uh, who's that game? That's, That's Hutchins. Mitch Williamson, maybe after the game that they've lost and maybe commiseration speech. Is, is he grabbing his nose or is he about to say something poignant? I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure. I think he's pretty dejected, the big fella. But there is Robbie McManus, the coach of the Lauderdale Bombers female side from the SFLW after their big win down at, the. I think that's the, actually at, uh, at Claremont perhaps. Yep. Or maybe, they had a win over Claremont. Yeah, so. they did have a win, but Boyer. Uh, was it Boyer, no, right? Uh, yeah, it was because it was a, a yep, one uh, of those gala days. Yep. yep. So there, the girls are singing a song. They had to have the words up on the back of the <laughs> back of the sheds there, so they didn't, that's didn't know. But that's good stuff. Now we've got one here that you took. Yeah, yeah on my travels around Tasmania, um, I did deviate off to a ground, and as per usual, Peter Holmes has nailed it again. Peter Holmes, I think we need a prize for him because I think he's got all five. I'm racking my brain. I do have a sneaky one coming up for him. Right, well, we'll see how that goes. Now, we're going to leave it there, Peach, but thank you so much for tuning in, folks. Thanks very much oh, for coming along, pleasure Peach. as always, Chooks. We must thank, of course, Jack Siggins for coming in from the Dodgers Ferry Footy Club. Our sponsors, Jackson Motor Company, AFL Taz, 
the Old Skulls Football League, and of course, the SFL, who provide us some funds to make this happen every week. All right, folks, until next time, take care, and we'll see you next time here on the map. <laughs> and to finish off today, we've got a great contest here between Signet and Dodger Ferry. The ball is just at half forward, it's tapped over the back. Look out, it's our favourite man, Wilson. Tight on the boundary line, he's nearly at Lou Wisham as he kicks that one with the aid of the breeze. Jack Wilson kicks an absolute Bobby Dazzler, and that is Furphy Play of the Day.